Let's now look more at this detail view that we have in the Django application. And the idea behind the detail view is that given a question ID, it should display information about that question inside an HTML template and return that for the user to view. Now at the moment, we're just returning this very simple HTTP response. It's not very interesting. So if we click one of the links here, we get taken to this page. So that's not very interesting. What we actually want to do is fetch the relevant question from the database and display information about that question on this page. So we're gonna do that now, but before we get started, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page just below the video and consider becoming a channel member if you're finding this content useful. And thanks to everybody that's joined the channel so far, it's greatly appreciated. And let's get started with this video. So what we want to do is make this page more interesting by actually fetching the question from the database based on this question ID that's passed in. Now what we're gonna do is take the question model that we have here, and we're gonna look this model up by the ID and compare it to the question ID that's coming in from the URL. So it's gonna be this statement here, question.objects.get. And the keyword argument is gonna be for the ID or the primary key of the question model. And we're gonna compare that to the question ID. Now because primary keys or IDs here are unique, this should only return a single object from the database. And that's what's expected by the .get function. So this should return a question model instance, not a query set of questions, just a single question that represents the question in the database that has this ID. And what we're going to do as well is remove the HTTP response and we're going to use the render shortcut again. So let's copy the render method here. And as we did before, we pass the request as the first parameter. And the second parameter is the name of a template that we want to return. And in this case, it's gonna be polls slash detail.html, which we've not created yet but we are gonna create in a second. And finally, we're gonna pass a context dictionary and we're gonna have a key of question. And we're gonna pass the question that has been fetched from the database into this dictionary. And that will then pass that question down for the detail.html template to use. So we're gonna define this template just now. So let's go back to the sidebar here. And inside the templates directory, under the polls directory, we will create detail.html. Now to keep this simple at the moment, let's just render the question using the two curly braces as we saw before. So we have a key called question inside the context dictionary and we're gonna render that out here. And we can test this out by going back to the page. And if we click this question here, we get the same text appearing on the page. So the question has been fetched from the database and the text is displayed on the page. So that is now working and this is the statement here, question.objects.get and then passing that ID in, that is what is actually fetching that question. Now what happens if we try and fetch a question ID that does not exist? If we go back to the template here, let's change the URL parameter from two to another number here. And if we execute that request, you can see we get back this page. So what we have here is a does not exist exception. And Django is telling us that a question matching the query does not exist. The problem here is that that number is passed into the view and then we try and get an object from the database with that ID. Now the .get method is something that expects there to be exactly one object in the database. And if we don't have that object, what's gonna happen is that the .get method is going to raise this exception. So we need to handle that inside the Django view. We can do that with a try except block. So let's surround this statement here in a try block, and then we can catch the exception here. So except question dot does not exist. And if the question does not exist, what we can do is raise a 404 not found. Now what we can do is at the top here, we can import something from django.http and that's the HTTP 404 object. And then what we can do inside the view, if the question doesn't exist, we can raise the HTTP 404 and we can pass a message into that. For example, question does not exist. So if we now go back to the page here that we had before, where we got the does not exist exception, we can refresh this and now we get the 404 not found and we get the message displayed here. And that is better, we're now handling the case where we have an ID in the URL that does not exist in the database. And instead of returning an error, we can instead use the HTTP 404 object and raise that from the view. And that's gonna return that for the client to see. And this is a very common idiom in Django as well. We want to fetch a detail page, so we want to use a model and call the .get method to fetch something by an ID or perhaps a slug in the URL. And as long as that ID exists, everything is okay, but you do need to handle the case where someone uses an ID that does not exist and you want to return a 404 not found. You can use the HTTP 404 object for that. And for any model that you have in a Django application, you can catch this does not exist exception 
and then determine the behavior when someone tries to request something that isn't in the database. Now we saw a shortcut method in the last video and that was this render method here. And it turns out there's another shortcut method that can take these four lines of code and cut them down to a single line of code. So let's go to the top here and from Django.shortcuts we're gonna import another function and that's the get object or 404 function. So if we go back down to the detail view, we can now remove these four lines of code. So I'm gonna comment them out for now. And then we can try and fetch the question from the database using the get object or 404 function. And we're gonna pass some parameters into that. Now let's look at the signature of get object or 404. The first parameter is the class or the model that we want to actually pass in. So in our case, it's gonna be the question model. And the second keyword argument here is gonna be the lookups for that model. And we can have any number of lookups in our case, we're just going to look for the ID being equal to the question ID that's passed in as a parameter. So when you call the get object or 404 shortcut function, you pass in a model and then you can pass in any number of lookup parameters here. And that's going to return the question instance. Or if the instance wasn't found based on these lookup parameters, it's going to return a 404 not found. So it basically condenses these four lines of code into a single line of code using this shortcut method. So let's test this out. Let's go back to the page. And if we refresh this page here, we still get the 404 not found. And we can go back to the URL. And if we go back to the ID of two, we get the detail page because that question does exist in the database. And this is all documented on the official Django tutorial. So as it says here, it's a very common idiom to use get and then raise a 404 if the object does not exist. And Django provides the get object or 404 shortcut. Now, one last thing I want to highlight in this video, if we go down to the very bottom of that section, there's also a get list or 404 function, and that works just like get object or 404, but instead of using the get method, it's going to use the filter method. So let's see an example of that just now. If we go back to the Django view, we can remove these lines of code. And what I'm going to do just above this is define some new code that I'm just going to remove at the end. So let's set the variable questions here. And we're going to use that other helper function, which we need to import at the top. And that was get list or 404. And we can go back down to the function here. And if we call that function here, we can pass the model in here. And that's the question model. And any lookups here are then going to be passed into the filter method instead of the get method on the question model manager. So let's say we wanted to look IDs up here. And we wanted IDs that were in a list. And let's say we have one, two and three in that list. We could then print these questions to the terminal and let's go back to the application and see how this works. If we refresh the page, we still get the response because there are questions that have one of these IDs and you can see them in the terminal at the bottom. We have the two questions appearing, but if we change the IDs to IDs that don't exist in the database, we're going to get the 404 exception. So let's go back to the page again, refresh the page and now we get the 404 because this time get list or 404 is not returning any objects based on this lookup parameter. Now you would not use get list or 404 inside a detail view, but it is another shortcut method that you can use if you want to have that behavior of returning a 404 when one of those was not found. Now that's less commonly used, but get object or 404 is super common, just like the render shortcut. And here we can see a view that combines the functionality of those two shortcuts to return a detail page for the question model. So I hope that makes sense. In the last couple of videos, we've seen two very useful shortcut methods in Django that render shortcut for returning an HTML template, optionally with some context data, and the get object or 404 shortcut, which returns a single item if it exists in the database. And in order to determine which item to return, you pass lookup parameters into get object or 404, and that's typically going to be a primary key or a slug or some kind of unique field, maybe an email field. And it's going to look up the question table in the database and try and filter that down to a single object. So that's all for this video. In the next one, we're going to look more at the templates in Django. And we're also going to dive into some useful URL based utilities. If you found this content useful and you want to support the channel, consider buying a coffee. We've got a link under the video and also consider becoming a member if you're finding this content useful. Thank you again to everybody that has joined the channel. It's greatly appreciated. And don't forget to like and subscribe as well. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you soon in the next video.